purpose of this video is to introduce you to the new process of testing for significance. In this chapter, we refer to analyzing the variance. So when we say variance, we refer to the differences in scores and um, see how those differences in scores relate to the differences in the sample means. In the previous t-test that we learned in chapter 9, 10, and 11, we were comparing and our emphasis was on the mean difference. So was there a difference between sample 1 mean versus sample 2 mean? And again, we had um, instances where those individuals were the same and also where they were different individuals. In this chapter, instead of focusing on the mean difference, um, in particular, we're, we're emphasizing the variability. And there are two variabilities that of interest. So within treatment um, variance versus between treatment variance. So within treatment variance refers to the unsystematic differences that we see um, within a sample. So you can think of each individual is different from the other within a sample. And so those differences or characteristics that individuals bring with them to a study um, make them unique and therefore contribute to the differences that we see in the mean um, that's calculated collectively across the individuals in the sample. So we ex explain those differences as random unsystematic factors that have an effect on the sample mean. The between treatment variation is explained by two things. It includes the random unsystematic factors which again were explained by the differences between individuals and, and also the systematic treatment effects. So the between treatment variance or variation is accounted for by the treatment effects in addition to the within variation or within treatment var um, variability. So understanding those different variations and how they're explained will help us understand this new equation or statistic called the F ratio. So the F ratio is computed by taking the variance between treatments and dividing it by the variance within treatments. And we'll produce a F ratio that then we compare to our critical F to draw our conclusion. What's unique about the um, ANOVA test and it why it's different from the t-test is that the t-test only allows us to compare two different levels. So if we have an independent variable, we can only compare the differences between two samples um, that represent the levels or conditions of that independent variable. Or another example is two quasi, um, or one quasi-independent variable with two different levels, males and females, the quasi-independent variable being gender. Now with the analysis of variance, we're able to um, compare multiple differences between levels um, or conditions of an independent variable. In this chapter, they refer to an independent or quasi-independent variable as a factor, and the conditions um, are referred to as levels. So a little a bit of new terminology for this analysis of variance test. We could use analysis of variance with a between and within subject design, but this particular chapter focuses on analysis of variance for one um, for one factor and or one independent or quasi-independent variable and using the between subject design. So the, the different levels will be made up of different individuals similar to chapter 10, independent measures t-test. So we're going to be doing an independent measures um, analysis of variance test in this chapter. Now we're, when we create our F values we're going to be constructing an F distribution and this distribution is positively skewed. And here at the peak um, that value is represented as 1.00 and that would be calculated by taking the variance between and dividing it by the variance within treatments. So if f is equal to 1.00, then we would conclude that the variance 
between conditions or levels. is equal to the variance within levels. So again, any um, characteristics that make individuals different from one another within a sample, that accounts for the variation in the mean that we calculate. And if that value is equal to the differences between the conditions, then we can conclude that there are no treatment effects because mathematically, if we look at this F ratio here, it says the systematic treatment effects plus the random unsystematic differences. So if we don't see any treatment effects, then we would be taking the random unsystematic differences divided by the random unsystematic differences, which would be the same number. So whenever you divide any number by itself, it's equal to one. So again, if our F ratio is equal to 1, then the variance between levels is equal to the variance within, and we would fail to reject the null. And here, the null in analysis of variance, the null, or let me use our notation, um, H sub 0 would say that Population 1 is equal to population 2 and is equal to population 3. So we would see no differences uh, amongst the three conditions of or levels of the independent variable or three different um, levels of the quasi-independent variable. Let's say we're talking about um, different majors, social majors, criminal justice majors, engineering majors, that the GPAs uh, across those different levels would be equal to one another. The research hypothesis for analysis of variance states that at least one level is different. So we would um, indicate that one at least one of these is different. We can um, apply post-test um, to determine exactly which ones are different from each other and we'll speak about that a little bit later. But our hypothesis test is simply stating that all of these levels are going to be equal to one another. Now again, going back to this idea that F is equal to one, if, if any differences that we see are attributed only to random unsystematic differences, then there were no treatment effects or effects of the different levels of the independent or quasi-independent variable. So our F ratio will always be greater than 1. If it's equal to 1, no treatment effect whatsoever. If it's greater than 1, then we use our critical F to make the distinction between failing to reject or rejecting the null hypothesis. So again, our F ratio will always be something greater than 1 because if, again, if we take this component out, then it's taking... Um, one thing dividing it by itself, and that will always equal one. But if we add in the treatment effects, then we're adding something to this value. So again, it's the random unsystematic plus the systematic treatment effects. So in other words, the numerator will then be something greater than the denominator. It will be the denominator plus the value that represents the systematic treatment effects, the between variance that we see. So just recognize that F will always be greater than or equal to 1. And then we'll use a critical F to make the distinction between the critical region and our um, common region. So again, we'll have a critical F value similar to our critical T or Z values, and we'll identify a critical region and then draw our conclusion based on the location of that F ratio. Again, it, it's stressing that what we're measuring, again, in the numerator is variance between conditions right, over the variance we see within. So the within is explained by differences uh, of the individuals that make up the sample, and the variance between is 
including those diff individual differences and, in addition to that, the treatment effect. So as I just stated, our F value is a ratio of taking this new statistic called MS, the mean squared between treatments. Again, that's explained by treatment effects in addition to unsystematic random factors over MS within, the mean squared of the within treatment, and that's explained by unsystematic um, differences or random unsystematic factors. To calculate these values, each MS, whether it's between or within, is uh, an SS value over its degrees of freedom. So we see here for between treatments, we have an MS is equal to SS over DF, and for within, we have MS with a SS over a degree of freedom. So we'll talk about those specifically in just a moment. In combination, when you take your between, your SS between and add it to your SS within, you get total SS, and we'll start there with the equations and define each of these values. So when we see SS, and our equation is the sum of x squared minus g squared over n, that should look familiar to what we're accustomed to calculating, which is the individual treatment SS or sum of squared deviations. For this case, um, the sum of x squared is equal to the sum of x squared across conditions. So when we've calculated sum of squared deviations, we've calculated the sum of x values that have been squared for each sample. And here what we're doing is taking the sum of all x values that have been squared across all levels of the independent or quasi-independent variable. G is equal to the sum of t, which I'll explain, or the sum of x across all levels. And again, uh, just to clarify, I, I use the word levels and conditions interchangeably. They mean the same thing. And t refers to the sum of x for each condition or level. So for each um, level or each sample, we're going to have the sum of x that we would use to calculate the mean of that sample. So t is just a new character that re represents the sum of x for each level. g is the summation of those x values across all levels. n is equal to sum of sample sizes across levels. So normally we would think of capital N as representing the population. You can think of this as the population of the study. How many total observations or participants are we working with? And as usual, N is equal to sample size. So technically, you can think of capital N as the sum of all our N values. And um, K, we have this new variable called K, and that's uh, in reference to number of levels. So how many different, you can think of it also as how many samples are we working with, or levels of the independent or quasi-independent variable. As stated earlier, again, each ms, or mean squared, is equal to ss, so for within it would be um, ss within over its corresponding degrees of freedom. So for within treatments, again, we have a, a unique degrees of freedom calculation, which is the total number of observations or participants minus the levels of the independent or quasi-independent variable. For our MS between, 
our equation is SS between over DF between. And for that DF calculation, it's K minus 1. Again, K is the number of levels minus 1. And for degrees, um, excuse me, for our total, SS total, we have degrees of freedom equation of N minus 1. So it's the total population um, of observations minus 1. So each MS, MS is equal to an SS, sum of squared deviation, over a DF. So we have that for the between as well as for the within. Um, another a notation or equation that I want to go over is the within treatment SS value that we see here. So SS each treatment is the cal computational calculation that we are um, very familiar with. It's the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. So you would calculate this um, value for each of the levels or each sample. You get a sum of squared deviations for each sample. And SS within is equal to the sum, oops, the sum of SS each treatment. So each SS would be calculated and SS would be, in other words, um, within SS1 plus SS2 plus SS3 um, if we had three different levels or three different samples. It's a very easy calculation based on what, how we've um, learned how to calculate the SS value for each sample. The SS between, a couple things to note here, we have two different equations. In fact, um, we have three, that, and the third one I'll explain on the next sheet, um, based on the relationship between the three values that we're working with here. The SS calculation here that says SS between is equal to N multiplied by SS for the means warrants a little explanation. So N's would be sample size, but we must recognize that to use this equation, um, all samples must have the same size. So the ends must be equal across the levels, which isn't always the case. So again, this equation can only be used if n is equal across levels. And the other thing to note is when we see SS for the means, a new equation, let me partition this off, the new equation would be SS means so each sample or level would produce this, uh, an average, a mean, and we want to compute the sum of squared deviations for the mean values. So we would take the sum of our means and square it minus the sum of our means squared over n. And the n, again, would be in reference to the sample size and they must be equal. So this um, SS, again, sum of squared deviations, notation is very familiar. The um, difference is instead of summing X values, we're summing the actual level mean values. So if we have three samples, we would have three means, and we would square those means. We would take the sum of those means and use that in this equation to calculate the sum of um, square deviations for our sample mean values. This table will help you organize the statistics that you calculate and you'll see that you won't always have to do the calculations for each statistic. In fact, the SS for between 
um, equations that are the most difficult um, or more time consuming, I should say. And we could arrive at those answers by um, seeing the relationship between the other two. So we'll begin with SS total. The sum of squared deviations total is equal to our SS between plus our SS within. In other words, if you were to calculate the SS total using our equation provided on the previous page, which was SS total is equal to the sum of X values across levels minus G, which represents the sum of X across levels squared over the total number of observations or participants. If we calculate that as well as the SS within, to obtain SS between, we would just look at the difference between the total and within to calculate the between. So again, the total is the summation of both of the SS for between and within. Therefore, SS between can be calculated by taking SS total minus SS within. And similarly, SS within would equal SS total minus SS between. Again, as stated earlier, SS between calculations are the most challenging or most time consuming. So if you can calculate the SS total and what SS within, um, it will be an easier way of calculating the SS between. The degrees of freedom are also related. So um, the degrees of freedom total is equal to degrees of freedom between added to degrees of freedom within. Degrees of freedom between is equal to degrees of freedom total minus degrees of freedom between, excuse me, within. And degrees of freedom within is equal to degrees of freedom total minus degrees of freedom between. So we can see how they're related. Using this table will really help you in um, solving for these different statistics in, in understanding the relationship between the two. Ultimately, we want to calculate this column, um, the F ratio, again, F is equal to MS, MS between over MS within. So if you have your um, SS values, you would take your SS column, whatever this is equal to, and divided by that value to get your MS, and um, then your F will be the two MS values, right? MS between divided by MS within. So our MS, again, just to review, MS between is equal to SS between over DF between. And our MS within is equal to SS within over DF within. I know it sounds very complicated, um, a lot to focus on and remember, but it's very methodical and um, as one, one statistic leads to the other, you'll see that it's actually quite easy to, to complete these equations and solve for each of these variables. So again, this column Right, is calculated by taking our SS divided by degrees of freedom. And then our F is once you get this value here, whatever it is, and this value will give you your F ratio. So using this table um, will, again, save you some time and, again, help you see the relationship between these variables to help you ultimately calculate your F ratio statistic to draw conclusions about the null hypothesis.
Finally, our new statistic, eta squared. Eta squared represents similar to, um, to what R squared represented in the t-test. It represents the percentage of variance accounted for by the treatment. So again, eta squared. This is new Greek letter. Squared represents percent. Percentage of variance accounted for by the treatment. Treatment effect or differences of quasi independent variable levels. And um, it is specific to independent measures ANOVA. So again, using the between subject design indicating that we have different individuals in each level of the independent or quasi-independent variable at a square will then be calculated to determine the percentage of variance accounted for by the treatment. And our equation up here is simply taking the between, SS between and dividing it by the SS total. And whatever that value is can, and will be a proportion and read, can be read as a percentage to explain the differences that we see across the levels and that difference being explained by the treatment.